Robocom has evolved over five generations of software automation. Each generation is mandated by the need to fill potential deficiencies in previous generations. These five generations together define the criteria for a fully automated computing environment. In the first generation, pre and post processors are constructed to eliminate hard copy user manuals and along with it, a large part of the learning curve. The second generation requires that all manual data entries, once performed, never have to be repeated, even if a mistake is made. This requires a replayable recording of the data entry process and effective control over the subsequent playbacks. Because the recording functions exactly as what a robot, it is recognized as one. The third generation is needed to avoid the long lead time associated with the construction and modification of pre and post processors. A software generator is needed to produce any pre and post processor on demand and on time. The fourth generation is an effort to provide an effective engine for the software generator. This takes us into the evasive realm of natural language programming. Besides being native, the language must be constructed in the most natural way of expression possible, leaving the logic and the bookkeeping to the computer. The computer is now made to think. Finally, just when it looks as if the present and the future are in good hands, the past resurfaces. What about all the software written in the past that exists in dark and secret codes? The inability to understand what is going on inside these software programs prevents us from modifying and expanding them. If such a software turns out to be critical for a particular field of analysis, it stifles the advancement of the entire field. The fifth generation is therefore a way to make all past software comprehensible. This is accomplished by reverse engineering, changing software into natural language. An intermediate step of converting them into a reversible form is also being contemplated. We're left with no other choice here. They either must be reverse engineered or they'll have to be scrapped. The central theme of Robocom is robotic computing. Enough has been mentioned of the promises. We'll now confess to some of the costs in achieving it. Typically, getting the job done is only half of the story. The other half is to do something for the computer so that the experience can be passed on to other users. Specifically, the computer must be taught and trained to do the same job. We need to test the robot to make sure that he can solve the problem on his own. This is accomplished by subjecting him to four series of tests. These tests are respectively first, second, third gear, and expressway processing tests. Normally, it is when Robocom does not pass the test that the bulk of the work comes in. In the first gear test, the robot guides the user manually step-by-step step through the processing by clicking the first button on the mouse or pressing the enter key repeatedly and without making any changes to the data. This exercise is done to make sure that the robot generated for the problem can similarly guide future users through the entire problem-solving process. The second gear test requires one single click of the second or middle button of the mouse. Then the user simply observes the identical but automated processing on the screen being carried out by the robot inside the computer. This is a handy way for experienced users to check out the problem model, or equivalently, the robot, without having to be tied down by the cumbersome manual clicking of the button at every step. The third gear is a single clicking of the third button, which orders the robot to skip and hop through the processing displaying only the type of components that make up the problem model, while omitting lengthy displays that document technical details. This gear is useful in troubleshooting the robot. A user can quickly get to the component he wants to and stop the automated processing by clicking the first button at the sound of a bell, which accompanies every display of a new component on the screen. The processing then reverts back to the manual first gear, thus allowing the user to take over the control and make changes to the model. And after all the necessary changes are made to the component, the user can resume the third gear processing by pressing the third button.
The final expressway test basically skips over the entire robotic processing and goes directly to modifying the document files that contain all the technical details. A user gets on the expressway by going into the graphic schematics of the model and clicking the component he wants to modify to the document of the selected component. The expressway should be used only when the plan modification does not affect the processing flow path. However, whatever the case, the user is still required to check out the first, second, and third gears after any change to the robot before considering that his job is finished. This final check of the robot becomes critically important when the problem is to be sent out to another Robocom installation for use by other users. Putting all analyses at everybody's fingertips is the goal of this robotic computing environment thus named Robocom. Robocom is leading the way to produce a public version of the equivalent Windows operating system. She will become the user interface for the GNU Unix equivalent being developed by the Free Software Foundation. The nuclear analysis community is again counted on to provide Robocom with the initial shakedown and liftoff. We hope that we have made you curious enough to pay Robocom a visit. The only way to really know Robocom is to log on and experience a live session.